So, in this lecture we will be discussing the decimal place value system. So, its origin how it has been used in the Indian mathematical and astronomical text not necessarily mathematical and astronomical. So, there are discussion about uh, this decimal place value system as an analogy even in philosophical literature. So, I will be giving certain citations from uh, the commentary of uh, Adi Shankara and Bhashya also wherein he draws analogies from this and then tries to project a certain philosophical view point which he wants to project. Uh, normally, uh, we do not have uh, opportunity to learn. So, what is the origin of a certain system? So, because uh, history of science is never a part of our educational curriculum. Anyway, so we will uh, try to find out. So, this is one of the most fundamental discoveries and it has been fairly well recognized that uh, Indians were the discoverers of this decimal place value system. The earliest uh, concrete reference, so in terms of representation has to be traced from some of these uh, inscriptions. So, we have this Brahmi, Karoshti etcetera. So, the earliest uh, evidences can be traced even in philosophical literature as I was mentioning. After the introduction and uh, the references from the philosophical as well as mathematical literature, I will move on to describe three different representations which have been used by Indian astronomers to refer to numbers Aryabhatan system, Katapayadi system, and Bhuta Sankhya system. So, these are uh, three different representations which have been employed to represent huge numbers which occur in the astronomical works. So, the sequence in which I have ordered them does not necessarily uh, represent the sequence in which they, they, they were used in the society, but it is for a certain different convenience I have used uh, this ordering here. So, Bhuta Sankhya seems to be the most earliest thing and uh, based on the evidences that are available in literature, this seems to be the earliest. So, Katapayadi one is not uh, very sure as to when it was uh, discovered, but certainly Vararuchi has employed and uh, Vararuchi's Chandra Vakyas, wherein the longitudes are represented in terms of sentences, particularly in the occasion of what is called Upakarma. So, this uh, these Vakyas are also rendered as part of various other rendering which is done Girna, Shreya, Dhenava, Shri and so on. Anyway, so these are all different representations which have been employed by people and we will show certain charts. So, wherein the vowels and consonants, so how are the numbers assigned to these vowels in different representations and then we will have a few examples. So, this is the outline of the present talk on decimal place value system. As I was mentioning, so many of us do not pose the question when did we start counting, what are the different systems of counting or what are the different ways of representing numbers. So, we have one way of representing, so that is all fine. Script is different, but even the way of representation, normally two things are known that is what I learnt. So, one is this the so called Arabic notation and uh, the other is the Roman notation. Okay. So, these are the two things which are uh, generally taught. So, we are so familiar that we do not even ask these questions that uh, whether there could be other representation and uh, when did uh, this way of using notation started. Obviously, we will be initially using words to represent numbers. So, after all uh, notation comes much later whatever be the discipline. So, initially the language, so we have the word to represent a particular number 2, 3, 10, 100 and so on and then comes the notation. So, we will uh, briefly see how did this particular way of representing started in the course of our lecture. So, as I was mentioning obviously, it is pretty old, but how old? So, the as I was uh, quoting yesterday, so this 3 ni shata, 3 sahasran, yagnim trimsascha, deva nava, chasaparyan. So, this is a vakya from Rigveda, so where the number 3339 has been represented in 
word numerals. Okay, so we have word three ni is three shata three hundred and so on. Talking about the ingenuity of the decimal place value system and the invention of zero, so one of the famous scientists of the recent past, the French mathematician Laplace, so observes the following: the ingenious method of expressing every possible number using a set of ten symbols, each symbol having a place value and an absolute value. A place value and an absolute value emerged in India. The idea seems so simple nowadays that its significance and profound importance is no longer appreciated. Its simplicity lies in the way it facilitated calculation and placed arithmetic foremost amongst useful inventions. The importance of this invention is more readily appreciated when one considers that it was beyond the two greatest men of antiquity. Archimedes and Apollonius. So I will not uh, describe the implications of the last sentence, but anyway, there is uh, not much time, but it is for you to uh, ponder over. So when uh, historians try to trace back, so what could be the origin, and so on and so forth obviously several hypotheses will be put forth. Many of these hypotheses so would seem to be true. So that has been very nicely put. The origin of the so called Arabic numerals have been written about so often that every view on the question seems plausible and the only way to only way of choosing between them is by personal conviction. So, why does uh, Benjoin observe this? I mean uh, the issue is, so we go by certain citations and testimonies and uh, over a period of time, so due to loss of memory, due to one's own uh, way of understanding what has been conveyed. So, it is quite possible that there are gaps in perceptions and the distortions do take place. And, uh, it is essential that one collates several evidences to come to a certain conclusion. And in this regard, so there is an interesting book, so which I would recommend all of you to go through and this book is by George Gifra. So, the book is titled The Universal History of Numbers. So, I would uh, take a couple of minutes to just say how this book got originated. So, apparently George Ephra was a school teacher and as he was teaching numbers, so to young kids, so one of the students asked, so where did these numbers come from? So, how do we understand where it got originated and the present day way of representation, this is the only representation and so on and so forth. So, Ephra could not answer the question raised by the student with a certain conviction in his own mind and therefore, he decided that he will spend the next few years tracing to find out evidences to answer this question. So, he resigned the job apparently and then it is stated that this man so went around from one place to other place and he was even lying on roadside not having enough resources to stay even in. I mean that is how he narrates, I mean that is the seriousness with which he has gone ahead and written this book, that is what has been uh, stated. After uh, doing research for decades, so he finally says with reference to the origin, we are now going to look at a truly remarkable method of expressing numbers, which is frequently found on mathematical and astronomical texts written in Sanskrit added to all other evidence. It shows us not only to prove beyond doubt that our present day enumeration is of Indian origin and Indian alone. Okay. So, this is what I want to convey through this. So, beyond what uh, Ifra has said, so Ifra obviously is not uh, so conversant with uh, the Sanskrit philosophical literature, we will also show a couple of evidences from the philosophical literature. To just give you a flavor, 
as to how different interpretations can be given for its origin. I just have a couple of photographs here. So, it says see the numbers, the number of angles, see for instance if you look at 1, so there is only 1 angle, if you say 2, so only 2 angles, 3 there are 3 angles, 4 and so on. So, this is one thing. The other person says, so it has nothing to do with the angle, it has to do with the lines. So, if you look at this, so there is only one line, there are two lines he says, there are three lines, <laughs> so, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 lines, 5 lines and so different people can obviously come up with different hypothesis. It is just for this sake, I just wanted to show this slide, there is nothing more to read here. Okay. So, finally, uh, Ifra says that most of the explanation that we find are all fanciful explanations and therefore, we need to trace back and not simply rely on these kind of explanations. So, having quoted from dozens of works, so both from uh, Islamic astronomers as well as uh, European scholars, he finally comes to the conclusion as I was saying before that it is surely of Indian origin. This quote from uh, the bishop in 7th century also forms a certain evidence that the signs of the Indians including the subtle discoveries in astronomy, discoveries that are more ingenious than those of Greeks and the Babylonians and of their valuable methods of calculation which surpass description. I mean he has been in high praise of what has been done here which he described as done by the means of nine signs. In fact, this facilitates a lot. So, that is what we need to understand from this quotation. So, the kind of facilitation uh, that it offers in representing this as we will see from the astronomical works. So, if one were to make a simple comparison, I mean the way this Roman script, so one has to uh, write and then addition, subtraction, the kind of facilitation, multiplication, all that it offers is something which is um, really amazing and that is why even Laplace, I mean was of uh, high praise with the reference to the advent of this decimal place value system. This Alkvar is me also in his work, he says we have uh, decided to explain Indian calculating techniques using the nine characters and to show how because of their simplicity and conciseness. So, these characters are capable of expressing any number. So, I mean they are all in high praise of this decimal place value system. So, think of multiplication using representing, so in a Roman so, it is all and if you have to represent something like 43,20,000 or something which is 1000 times that, so it is all extremely confusing. Okay. The evidences in the form of inscription is the 3rd century BCE, you have something like uh, this, this is the kind of representation that one finds in the rock edicts of Ashoka. So, then as we proceed further, there are uh, Buddhist inscriptions, so about uh, 3, 4, so, 2nd century BCE, so we have this representation and we proceed further and in short, so it seems to have started something like this and today we use this. Okay. So, it has almost taken about 18 centuries for the numeral notation which we use today, so starting from Brahmi to modern. So, the modern is estimated around um, uh, 15th century, 15th, 16th century when the printing uh, started. So, uh, see we have uh, different scripts in different languages that is a different thing, but the place value thing is a different thing. So, with reference to 0 as a number and uh, how it is represented, so it is uh, too difficult to precisely fix, but uh, we find traces of it in the Pandini's work on grammar as well as Pingala's Chanda Sutra. So, we have this Adarshanam Lopaha, Rupe Shunyam Vishunye is a sutra in Chanda Sutra. So, he uses the word Shunya for instance okay. and Shunya also represents a certain understanding of what this physical world is with reference to Buddhist philosophers. This word shunya is does not necessarily represent the number 0 when it is used in philosophical literature, but uh, in this Chanda Sutra, so it has nothing to do with the philosophical implications, but uh, it is 
uh, used as a marker. Now, I give a couple of quotations from uh, commentaries on Patanjali's Yoga Sutra and Shankara's commentary on Brahma Sutra Shankara Bhashya. So, this forms a very, very concrete evidence. Yatha ekha rekha shatasthane shatam dashasthane dasha ekacha ekasthane. So, eka rekha, so rekha is a certain line, okay, so which you draw. So, he says if it is placed in shatasthana, so obviously it speaks of a certain place value. Shatasthane shatam, so it represents 100, if you just shift it, so it represents 10, so eka rekha the same. So, it has a certain place value, it has a certain value to represent a number, so both of them. And uh, this is more graphic uh, portrayal to convey a certain philosophy. Shankara says, Eko pisan devadattaha loke swarupam sambandhi rupancha apekshya aneka shabda pratyaya bhag bhavati. So, manushyaha, brahmanaha, shrotriyaha, vadanyaha, balaha. See, for instance, a certain person. So, uh, individual you just consider, we call him a boy, we call him husband, we call him director, we call him grandfather, whatever it is. So, depending upon the relation that you want to associate with another individual, he, he is described by different terms, valaha, yuvas, thaviraha, pita, putraha and so on. Similarly, he says, yatha yekapi sati rekha, the same line. So, sthanan yatvena nivishamana, depending upon where it is placed, eka dasha shata sahasradi shabda prate bhedan anubhavati. Of course, these two are cited by Shankara as an example to convey something else in philosophy. But the point is, so we have a very, very concrete evidence uh, by Shankara's time. So, it has uh, gained a, such an understanding in the society that examples are something which should be known by everybody. So, otherwise it is not going to be cited as an example to convey something else which is more profound. Okay. The explicit use of decimal place value system obviously is found in the mathematical and astronomical literature. So, the earliest text that is available for us today is the Aryabhatiya of Aryabhata. So, this was composed in 499. Ready? See, the degree of sophistication with which uh, Aryabhata has been able to handle is something which is uh, quite amazing. He has introduced his own way of representing numbers. Obviously, it is a decimal place value that will be very, very evident not only from the representation of numbers, but also from the procedures which Aryabhata has described to obtain square root, cube root, etcetera. So, the algorithms uh, which will be discussed later will make it extremely clear to you as to how they have been able to use this place value system in order to do lot of mathematical computations. In fact, quite ingenious and sophisticated that a single syllable can represent a number of the order of magnitude 10 to the power of 16 in Aryabhatta system. This is quite convenient to represent huge numbers but at the same time it is extremely difficult to pronounce as you will see uh, with a few examples which I will show little later. For instance, uh, this 43 lakh 20 thousand years is represented by Khyugru by Aryabhata. So, Khyugru represents this particular number and uh, what Aryabhata has done is, so he has chosen the vowels to represent the place value. So, we have a system of uh, representing vowels and uh, the ingenuity lies in Aryabhata making use of the vowels to, in other words, I mean he has sort of vocalized the place value, I would say. So, vowels are essential for pronouncing consonants and that is why we teach ka, kha, ga, gha. So, we do not say k, kh, g, g. Okay. So, vowels are essential for pronouncing consonants and Aryabhata has uh, smartly used these vowels to tag a certain place value to that and the consonant will represent the number. So, for those who are not familiar with vowels, so I just thought I will just display this chart. So, a, e, u, r, l, a, o, i, au. So, this is all. 
okay, the longer ones I mean we should just ignore. So, a e wu, so that is how we have the sutra also ai wun riluk e wong. So, these uh, first three sutras of panini, so give the set of vowels a e wu rilu e wo i au. So, in Aryabhatan system once we reach au, so au, so with a certain uh, consonant tag to that, so will be multiplying that consonant by 10 to the power of 16. So, Aryabhata has further classified the consonants into two groups. This chart will help you in understanding this kind of classification. So, the uh, matrix that you see here kakha gaganga and papa babama up to this, so this phi by phi, so 25 he calls them as varga letters. So, varga and avarga. So, varga uh, the term as such has also the meaning of square. So, the operation of a square, a squaring. So, this is also referred to as varga. So, but as far as uh, this is concerned the set phi into phi I mean is 25 may be it is in this sense it is called varga it falls into a certain class. Okay. So, then we have uh, yara, lava, shasha, sa. So, la I do not think is uh, employed by Aryabhata, but up to this certainly. So, he has uh, associated certain numbers to all these consonants and the place values will be decided by the vowels. Okay. So, this is extremely important because when a string is given to decipher one has to have a very clear understanding whether this falls in varga or avarga. So, when we place these consonants with the vowels, so he will classify depending upon whether it is varga or avarga it has to be placed under. So, if we make a mistake we will be multiplying it by a power of 10, okay, so which will go wrong. So, in Aryabhatan system he assigned values 1 to 25 to the varga letters. So, ka is 1, so ka kha ga ghanga, cha cha ja, so on so on, so we come to 25. So, 1 to 25 is associated with the consonants which forms varga. So, with reference to avarga, ya, ra, la, va, sha, sha, sa, ha, so it goes from 30 to 100. So, as I said it is quite novel and ingenious. In a way Aryabhatan system can be thought of as centesimal system. The vowels as I said are used for denoting place value, but since he has classified the consonants into two groups varga and avarga, one can associate a certain power of 10 with varga and another with avarga. In fact, he has described his system by means of a verse, but all that you need to remember is, so every vowel, so as we move from a to au, so it goes as 10 to the power of 2. In this sense I mean it can be called as centesimal system. So, here I would also like to show a chart wherein some error, in fact uh, when I offered uh, this course on mathematics in India to our students at IIT, I showed something and then uh, so the student sent me sends me a mail. So, looking at something in the web and then said, so there is seems to be a discrepancy between what you said and what is there in the web. So, I said there is an error there, so I thought I will just uh, show this to you also to see that, so this error is not committed. Okay. So, we have to be very careful when we take material from the web. So, so, the error is the following. So, a, e, u, r, l, then a and o should come. See. So, a, o, i, au. So, they have swapped this, and therefore, so there will be a serious error in deciphering the number uh, when we take this chart to be the right chart. Okay. So, let us see a couple of examples. So, q, gr. So, this is a very important number 
and that is why I decided that we should start with this example. So, what is to be done before getting into this table? So, you please look at this verse. So, Aryabhata says Vargaksharani Varge Avarge Avargaksharani Kat Mau Yaha Kadvi Navake Swaraha Nava Varge Avarge Navante Vargeva. So, Vargaksharani Varge. So, here he has used the term Varga in two senses. When he uses the compound Vargaksharani, it refers to the Varga letters, but when he uses the word Varge separately, so it means you have to place it in the Vargasthana. So, by Vargasthana, we mean 10 to the power of 0. 10 to the power of 2, 10 to the power of 4 and so on. Is it clear? Whenever you are given a string, so when you find a Varga letter, so then you place in the Vargasthana and if you encounter a Avarga letter, so Yara Lava, you have to place it in the Avargasthana. So now it will become pretty evident to you. So you have to create a certain table, so this will be very convenient in the initial stages for us to decipher the number. For every vowel, you have to create two places. One is Vargasthana, the other is Avargasthana. So, for A we have two, for E we have two, for U we have two and so on and so forth. For every vowel, we will create two places. Okay. And uh, whenever we get a Varga letter, we place it under Varga when you encounter avarga consonant, you place it under avarga. So, this is what the verse essentially tells and uh, if we look at the last part of the first half of the verse, it says kat mau yaha. So, kat mau yaha, so kat means from ka, okay. so the number starts. Kath from ka you start assigning numbers to various consonants 1 to 25 and then he defines what ya represents. So, very clearly he states ya represents ngumau, ngumau means nga and ma. So, if you look at this table, so nga represents 5 and ma represents 25. So, nga and ma put together. So, whatever be the value, that is the value uh, which is assigned to ya, okay. So, that is what it means. Kat ngumau yaha. So, this incidentally will give you a flavor of how Aryabhata has written his work. So, that is the style of composition in those days, and uh, the entire Aryabhatiya is just uh, 108 verses, so which deals with all mathematics, all astronomy, and so on. So, which can be just taken in A4 sheet. Ek kitab ek page mein aajayega, okay. So, that is how it is. Anyway, so this is what it is, katak mau yaha. So, then he says khadbi navake swaraha. See, swaraha basically refers to vowels, okay. So, khadvi navake, so you sort of uh, arrange this, so that is what it means. So, nava varge avarge, see. So, for varga you have 9 vowels, for avarga you have 9 vowels. So, now we will look into this example q gru kh yu gh so these are the three vowels uh, three consonants that we find here and uh, vowels are u and r q gr there are two vowels and three consonants so kh is the second thing okay k kh so the value of kh is and uh, we find gh also there, so that has the value 4, q, gr and we find ya also, ya is 30 here, okay. so it is the our ga letter. So now when we try to arrange it here, so since kh does not have a vowel on its own, so when you have this kind of a combination, so then the 
vowel that is tagged to the consonant which is succeeding it, so will be the vowel which will be tagged to this previous consonant with an vowel also. So, this is the connotation and kugr, so for k, so you have u and for ya also you have u. So, since it is avarga, you place this in avarga place, k is a varga letter and therefore, you place it below varga, fine. Then we move on to the next syllable. So, the next syllable is gr, gha is 4 and it has to be placed below r. So, because the vowel tagged is r, q gr. So, this actually represents, so with 4 zeros followed here, so 43 lakh 20,000. So, this is the representation which has been given by Aryabhata. Aryabhatan way of representing numbers. So, we will uh, see one more example. So, cha ya gi yi mu shu chrul ru. So, that is why I said it has one advantage of representing huge numbers in very short form, but uh, it is a bit difficult to read. So, cha ya gi yi mu shu chrul ru. So, here we again notice that uh, there are several vowels which have been employed in this string. We have a associated with cha ya and then gi yi we have yi and then wu and then r. So, cha is a varga letter and uh, it represents 6. Okay. So, if you look at this table, so, cha is 6, then cha ya, ya is avarga letter, so you place it here, gi, gi is 3 and uh, yi again 3, ngu is 5 and uh, shu is avarga letter, therefore you place it here and uh, chr, cha is this and uh, la and r, ya, ra, la. So, ya starts with 3, ra 4 and la 5, okay. so therefore 5. So, this basically represents the number of revolutions made by moon. So, in fact, uh, to give you the significance of these numbers, so this gives the number of revolutions made by the sun in a large period which is called Mahayuga. So, and uh, this represents the number of revolutions of sun and this represents the number of revolutions made by the moon in the same period of 43 lakh 20,000 years. So, these uh, are strings which have been provided by Aryabhata in order to tell you the number of revolutions made by the planets in a large period called Mahayuga. Okay. And uh, one more example, Du Mvi. Dhva. So, here we have u, we have e and we have a. So, so dha, see dha is 14 and uh, ni, nga is 5 is varga letter, but vya is va, see nmi. So, this va is avarga letter, so therefore, you have to ya, ra, la, va. So, 3, 4, 5, 6 you have to place it below and dhva, so we have dha without a vowel and the following vowel is a and therefore, ga represents 4 and va represents 6. Okay. So, this is the example. Okay. So, these things uh, see ni, shi, bun, ru, rish, kru. So, this is very, very difficult to <laughs> pronounce, but these are all basically the revolution numbers which has been stated by Aryabhata. Much more interesting thing is, so Aryabhata actually presents the entire sign table in one verse. So, you may remember that uh, in school days you would have referred to sign table, in clerk's table one page, two page all that will be there, but this man has presented in a simple verse. See, read this verse, makhi, bhakhi, pakhi, dhaki, nakhi, nyakhi, nakhi, Hasjas, Kaki, Kishgas, Khagi, Khigwa, so and so on. <laughs> so, this is how the 
see all these basically represent these uh, values of sign differences. In fact, when you say sign table, so the quadrant is divided into 24 parts, we will see later as to how the Indian astronomers and mathematicians have uh, found very efficient ways of computing uh, accurate sign values over a certain period of time. So, this Aryabhata what he has done is he has basically presented this sign table in one verse. See for instance, Makhi see Ma Pa Pha Ba Bha Ma. So, Ma is 25 recall. So, in the Varga, so Ma is 25 and Kha see 2 because it is tagged with E ah, 10 raise to 2. So, you have 225. So, this 225 basically represents the sin. So, sin theta suppose theta is 3 degree and 45 minutes. So, sin theta is theta you know right. So, it is represented in minutes and therefore, so 225. So, if uh, you take 3 degree 25 minutes if you represent in minutes it is 225. So, sin theta is theta. So, that is the kind of thing. So, but as uh, it increases the next value of 225 if you choose. So, it will reduce. So, it will keep on reducing. So, basically what Aryabhata has given is sign table in the form of differences. Suppose you want to find out so sign of uh, say 10 degrees. So, you have to add this plus this and then you have to use some interpolation to get the value in between. So, this is how Aryabhata has presented. Okay. Now, I move on to the uh, other system which is called Katapayadi system. So, the name Katapayadi stems from the fact that in this system, so ka, ta, pa, ya. So, all of them represent 1. See, if you look at this, this table, so below, so we have a representation from 1 to 0. So, here also it is a mapping of consonant to a certain number. But since we have 25 of them, so in Katapayadi what has been done is, so ka you say start with 1, ka, kha, ga, ga and so on and uh, ta, so you go up to 0, then you start with again 1 and then go to 0, pa, pha, ba, bha, ma, 1 to 5. Then yara lava we have and of course, uh, they also use this la. So, Aryabhata has not uh, assigned any value to la, but the Kerala astronomers sometimes they use la also, rarely they use and uh, that represents number 9. Uh, here there is no classification as varga and avarga, but you have many to one mapping or rather one to many mapping. So, if you want to represent number 1, you can choose any of the 4 here. Okay. So, 2 you can choose any of the 4 and so on. So, this is what basically Katapayadi system is all about. What has been done here has been beautifully uh, summarized in one single verse by Shankara Varman in his Sadratna Mala. So, like Aryabhata said Varga Aksharani, Varga Varga Aksharani. So, the entire system has been captured beautifully in this verse. So, it says Nanya Vachascha Shunyani, Shunya is 0. So, nanyamu achascha, so he says na anya, so they represent 0, nanyamu achascha shunyani. Then sankhyaha katapayadayaha, so the numbers are kata, katapaya adi, adi means starting with that. So, kadi, tadi, padi, yadi, okay. so ka, kadi nava, tadi nava and so on, that is what they say. Then when it comes to a conjunct form of a syllable, then how do you decide? So, Mishre tu Upanta hal Sankhya. Here in the Aryapatan system, since the vowel was used to tag the place value, so we had a problem. Here it is not that way. So, you find the string and you keep on, it will always start from so the least place value and then you proceed to the higher thing. Okay. So, when you have a certain string, for instance, if you look at this. So, Ayur Arogya Saukhyam. So, in fact, uh, the famous work Narayaniyam ends with this string Ayur Arogya Saukhyam. So, this Ayur Arogya Saukhyam represents this number. See. So, when you look at the definition 
which has been provided in this. So, it says Nacha Vachyo Halaha Swaraha. So, Swaraha, Swara is vowel, Hal actually represents consonant. Okay. So, Halaha Swaraha Nacha Vachyaha means any vowel tagged to the consonant one should not consider. So, why is he stating this? So, if a vowel occurs on its own without a consonant tag to it, then it represents a number, but if it is tagged along with, so only consonant has to be considered. So, that is what Nacha Chintyaha Halaswaraha. Mishre tu upantahal sankhya. So, upantahal means that which is close to. So, for instance, in this uh, string which has been given here, a is a vowel. So, all vowels they represent number 0. So, nanyau achascha. So, if you look at the definition, so ach is a certain uh, mnemonic which has been used to refer to all the vowels. So, it has to do with the Panini Sutra, I won, Riluk, E wong, I auch. So, ach is a so, mnemonic which is used to refer to all the vowels. Similarly, hal. So, in fact, if you look at the Maheshwara Sutras, it will start Hayavarat, Lun and so on. So, ha il. So, that is uh, something which is used to refer to all the consonants. So, this verse says nanyau achascha shunyani, all the vowels and na and nya represent 0. So, sankhya ha katapayadayaha, mishretu upant hal sankhya nachavachyo halaswaraha. So, you can see this example. A U, Ra, Ro, Gya, see Gya is a conjunct consonant. So, what you do is you drop Ga and you take the, the consonant which immediately precedes the vowel. So, it can be a, a, a consonant, two consonants and uh, three consonants clubbed with all those cases. The one which immediately precedes the vowel has to be considered, has to be counted and therefore, you count only Ya. So, if ga were to be counted, 3 should appear here. So, that is not appearing. Okay. So, and then sa ikhya again. So, kha actually represents 2, but that is dropped, only ya is taken. So, basically, it represents the number 1712210. Commentators have said this actually represents the date on which this work Narayaniyam got completed. Okay. So, this is a another way of coding it. In fact, there are several examples like this. One of the astronomical works called Tantra Sangraha also, it starts with the invocatory verse He Vishnu Nihitam Krishnam, it represents this date and Lakshmi Shanihita Dhyanaihi appears in the last verse of the text and it represents this number. If you see this, the difference is only 5 days. Apparently, this person Nilakantha has composed, that is what commentators say, this entire work Tantra Sangraha about 430 verses and odd, so in just 5 days. <laughs> so, these are all examples. Quickly, I will uh, also mention about this Bhuta Sankhya system. In Bhuta Sankhya system as the term also itself uh, gives you an idea. So, Bhuta is something which is existing. So, Sankhya is number. So, you choose certain elements in nature. So, for instance, ice. When you say ice, so they represent 2. Okay. So, when you say fingers, it will represent 10. When you say Veda, it represents Four. So, based on the familiarity, so with the bhutas, bhutas not necessarily the physical elements. Okay. So, it could be physical element, it could be certain mythological thing, it could be referring to some literature which is quite common. So, for instance, when they say anga, so anga always refers to Vedanga. Okay. They are six in number, Shiksha, Kalpa, Vyakarana, Nirukta. So, they use this giri sapta, okay. so yadu kundala vada, for example, yarth moon, so yarth is only one yarth, so moon, the moon associated with the yarth, so they all represent number 1. So, any synonym of yarth will be used to represent 1, of moon will represent. Uh, so, then <coughs> for representing 0, they use uh, akasha, see the space looks like a sort of empty in that sense. So, space is used to represent number 0. Any synonym of uh, akasha is 
0. So, as I said eyes, ears, jaws, knees, hands, see finger system, hands is 2. So, sometimes uh, they use Manu, see Manu there are uh, 14 Manmantras and therefore, Manu represents 14 okay. and uh, Rama, so Ayodhya Rama, Balarama, Parshurama, <laughs> so it represents 3. So, Guna when they use see Sattva, Rajas, Tamas, so all these things, so this is how the Bhuta Sankhya system is. When they use months, there are 12 months, so that represents 12 and uh, so one interesting example is Madhavas value of pi. So, this is what I thought I will just choose here. So, Vibudha Netra, see Netra is 2. So, you look from here. So, Vibudha basically represents Devas. See. So, therefore, it is 33. So, 30. So, it has to do with the uh, description which is found in Puranas and uh, Netra is 2. Then Gaja, so there are Ashta Diggajas. So, therefore, it represents 8, Ahi is also 8, Ahi represents serpent, so, 8 serpents kind of a thing. Hutashana, see, Hutashana represents fire, see, Hutam, Hutam offered, Ashana one who swallows. So, Hutasha refers to Hutasha, Hutashana. So, fire is also 3 because we have Tretagni, see, Dakshinagni, Ahavaniya and Garhapatya. So, Hutashana refers to 3. And we have 3 here, 3 also represents 3, therefore 3, 3 is consecutively, okay. Hutashana, uh, 3 and then we have Guna, so Guna is also 3, then we have Veda, 4, then Bham, so Bham means Tara, okay, stars, okay, they are 27, okay, so therefore this number 27 appears here and Varana is elephant, see Varana is a synonym of Gaja, elephant 8 and then Bahavaha hands. So, this first line basically represents this number and the denominator is represent Nava Nikharva, Nikharva here refers to the power of 11, Nava Nikharva. So, this actually gives you the value of pi which is correct to 11 decimal places about which we will discuss later. So, these are all few other examples. So, Khadri Rama Agnayaha, Kha is 0, Adri Rama Agni. Okay. So, there are a few other examples with which you can try to practice more of Bhuta Sankhya. So, to conclude, so Aryabhatan system though quite ingenious, it is a bit difficult to use that system to represent because it is too difficult to pronounce and therefore, not many people, in fact, uh, we do not know of any other astronomer but for Aryabhata using his system to represent the number, though it is very profound in its own way. As far as Bhuta Sankhya is concerned, so it is a sort of once one is familiar with a certain system, it will be. In fact, it is very convenient to use Bhuta Sankhya system for composition. So, which is also see if you are familiar with certain terms, it is quite convenient to read, and therefore, most of the astronomers have resorted to Bhuta Sankhya system. In fact, this seems to have been the most earliest system, but then Aryabhata devised his own, and Katapayadi has its own charm and beauty. And in fact, uh, as I told you, Ayur Arogya Saukhyam, it can mean something else and it can also represent some number. In fact, the entire Vakya, Vakya system of astronomy is based on this Katapayadi. So, Girna, Shreya, Dhyana, Vashri, all the longitudes are listed in meaningful sentences, but when you decode, it gives you different things. So, all this uh, conclusively proves the facility with which people have been using decimal place value system. So, with this we conclude here. Thank you.